All right, boys and girls, I've got a silly one for you today. This is my recreation of the M1915 Poppenberg Percussion Stick Grenade. Now, there's not going to be instructions of the explosive filler or any visco fuse nor primers appearing in this video, so that way I can keep it on YouTube. This first model here, this is my prop for showing you guys, this one is not loaded. However, this part, the functioning striker assembly, is assembled. So let's go over what this entails. This second assembled unit will show us all of the parts needed. I have a hammer from an M228 train grenade, which is held by a sear, held by a lever. So when the hand is placed on the lever, it prevents this sear from releasing until we allow the spoon to open, much like a traditional grenade. Now I have bent these pins because this first prototype here is a bit messy and they like to fall out on me. My much nicer print did not have this problem. And you can see the hammer is retained by this sear. I have two models of this firing device available. One fits the standard M1917, M1915, and so forth canister head, as seen on the early World War I style model. The second fits a 1913 or 1915 Kugel ball grenade head. These threads are 5811, which is the standard for an M228 training grenade fuse, and this will fit any modern thread pitch grenade party for that part, although this is the historically accurate model. The Kugel ball is not intended to be used with the stick grenade percussion device, however these were assembled as such and there are surviving examples. This has even been featured in the video game Battlefield 1 as the Dud Club, a melee weapon which has a small percent chance of killing both of you. Now that I have disassembled this one, we can see the parts that require fitting. We have to drill a hole through this part to the depth that the primer will sit initially. Then we need to drill the base that this center part sits in, pin the center part between the two flanges, and then I used a small drill bit to pre-drill these nails, and I've hammered them in at an angle that will not introduce them to the center fuse. I've drilled a small hole that allows the leg of the M228 spring to sit further down to make assembly of this part easier. And then I've used a file, a drill, and I believe a lighter on this one so that this sear can tilt further back. I initially wanted to make the sear sit out taller so that I did not have to cut into the wood and stick. However, it was a bit further out than I would like, and it does not look as good. This is much thicker than an original, but it has to be to use the M228 hammer. And while it's thicker in this direction, the side profile is very close, albeit the wrong number of pinholes. And it looks pretty nice like this, so I figured I would do the extra woodwork. This one does not have the optional spring hole for the percussion lever, and I find it is not needed, but it is just fun to have the added parts. A lot of hard work went into making it so, but personally, one of my favorite parts of this device is how safe it is. I can detach the head, and now this is simply a primer and fuse, and I don't have to worry about the compound in the cylinder being accidentally ignited. I can store this separately from the igniter, just like the real version. Additionally, while this is hard to assemble, and it requires a bit of finger strength to make everything fit, once I have this part assembled, I can actually install the primer very last. So I don't have a live primer sitting in here while I'm manipulating the hammer trying to hold everything back. And then once this is removed, it is fairly reliable. The second version, which has the modern threads to fit my Kugel ball, has a proprietary collar with little fake stake marks on it. And the first version is compatible with the other stick grenade heads. 
I've received questions as to where to find the M228 Striker assemblies, and you can find them online quite easily. Personally, I enjoy Pyro Creations as I pick up 37mm cases and the like from them in bulk with these parts. Now I'd like to take a brief moment to thank my patrons. Now these particular devices were not used with patron money, and the filament was actually sponsored by Black Lotus Coalition of the BLC. I have a Striker Street Sweeper 3D printable shotgun I'm working on, as well as an LR300 style bufferless direct impingement AR-15. Those require a lot more funding and a lot more research than a simple little firework like this. And I'm also going to link my Patreon below, where you can also find some of these previous files for free, even if you're not a patron. As always, enjoy, feel free to ask questions, and don't do anything with these that I have to see on the news. That is all I have for you today.